Hi, I'm Dave and you're about to watch my approach to the string calculator TDD kata using F sharp and NUnit. In this exercise I'll build out the add functionality of a calculator that accepts string expressions as input using test driven development. I've chosen to use ncrunch as my test runner so I can get continuous feedback about the status of my tests as I write the code. You can see that I've already created a skeleton solution for this kata so let's get started. The kata's first requirement is to create an add method that will take 0, 1, or 2 numbers and return their sum. So we can give it an empty string, 1 or 1, 2, and it will add them up. In the case of the empty string, it will return 0. So we'll start by implementing a test for the empty string scenario since that's the easiest. Add the string returns zero. Create our calculator. Get our result. String and assert. Alright, so we have a test and it's not building uh, according to ncrunch because we have not yet implemented the add method. So let's go ahead and do that on the string calculator. And we'll return negative one so that it fails. And if we change that to zero, everything passes. Now that the first test of the empty string is working, we can move on to doing another test with a single number. I'm going to cheat a little bit and move straight to test cases. Uh, most of these tests are going to look almost exactly the same. So let's go with test case, give it a single number of one, and cheat a little bit more using the result parameter and let a end unit do its assertion for me. Add single number. Returns that number. Give it an expression. Okay, and this should fail. And it does. So now in order to keep these te the first test passing, we need to have it return zero for the empty string and return one because it's the simplest way to make this test pass for anything else. So let's just use F sharp pattern matching. Empty string will give us zero and everything else this point will give us one. And unit is happy. So that's not really very useful. So let's give ourselves a our second case. Two, result two, we'll be back to red. So in order to make them still all pass, we can just do int 32 parse expression. And we see that everything passes once again. Now we can go ahead and implement tests for two numbers. Start with our test case. Result of three. Now, because the requirements were saying common delimiter, let's give this a 
better name than just add two numbers. Let's identify the type of delimiter. Right. And everything will, the previous tests will still pass and this one fails. So we can detect that we've got multiple numbers right now just by adding another condition. We'll do, we don't care what it really is, but we do want to add a constraint. Expression contains, oops, a comma. We'll give it three. This will make the test pass. And we see it does. Let's go ahead a second test case to this with two numbers. Two, three, and this will be five, and we'll be back to red. So we can expand upon this. We really just want to split it on the comma. So let's say let numbers expression dot split and F sharp doesn't allow for params if you're used to C sharp so we just have to give it the array of characters we're doing a comma and now we can do an add now these are still both strings because we just split on the comma so we need to convert them to integers and we'll just do that with int 32 parse numbers index of zero and we'll do int 32 dot parse numbers index one and it all passes save all of those now if we go back and look at our tests we start to see a little pattern here and we're constantly creating a new string calculator and if this was more involved we could refactor this out to have a separate uh, factory method or something I'm not going to do that in this example um, we could also potentially combine the add single number returns that number and add two numbers with comma delimiter returns their sum tests but I like splitting them out I think it makes sense to identify the scenarios directly as I've seen in, in so many different uh, TDD uh, demonstrations so I'm gonna follow that for the remainder of this so now we've satisfied everything from the first requirement we can move on to the second which is to allow the add method to handle an unknown amount of numbers so we've already handled 0 1 and 2 so let's move on and start doing tests for more than two numbers and we'll still with the stick with the common delimiter for now we'll go one two three so to six add more than two numbers with comma delimiter returns their sum test fails so this is where I think F sharp really starts to shine so really we've already got the, the basis of this in place but we can take this a little bit further and we're gonna say since we're still working with a comma delimiter we'll still work with with this uh, with the the expression contains as our match and our condition on that but let's take this a little bit further what we really need to do is apply the same function to an, uh, to add these numbers up so let's start by defining a list of our numbers and all that really is is for n in expression dot split we're going to apply this first function which is going to be int 32 dot parse n so we've got this list of all of the numbers split out by comma in 
that, that were passed in through the expression. And we can do the pipe to list.reduce. And we're going to apply a second function, just a delegate. And we'll give it an accumulator value and the value to add onto it. And we will invoke accumulator plus v. And what have I missed? I missed an error. And now everything passes. So we've just taken that those two lines, wrapped them into one, built a list, pushed it into the list reduced function. We can add our new case with different values. Let's go with two, three, four to give nine and everything should still pass. The requirements now call for us to be able to handle new lines between numbers instead of commas. And the example that is given is to accept one new line, two, comma, three. So an easy way to do that, test case, more than two numbers with mixed delimiters returns their sum. And to save time, do that. Now this is going to fail. NCrunch is going to tell us that we have a input string not in the correct format. So that's because we've now introduced this new line. We want to change our add method to support these new lines. And we can really kind of simplify this a little bit more because we really don't need this anymore. Now the expression split on that uh, the comma is going to return the string as it is without you know just be a single element array if there's not that delimiter in there. So we can just remove this condition and let's just move this and replace this bit and add another condition add another character in here for it to split on, which is going to be that new line and everything passes. If we want to try just a little different approach, we can swap these delimiters around. And everything passes once again. The fourth requirement has us adding support for custom delimiters. Custom delimiters are identified by an optional string, optional line actually, at the beginning of our expression that follows the format of two forward slashes, a delimiter, and a new line character, followed by the expressions that we would have been entering before. Since this line is optional, everything that we've already done still needs to be supported, but we need to take into account these new lines. So we'll start by doing basically what we did before with this new line this, this, uh, with the custom delimiter and uh, an empty string. So same as before just with the the custom delimiter string. I'm going to use a semicolon just because it's different. We know we'd be testing something op something other than what we already have. There's our new line.
and we will fail. Now we can add a new case for everything with a constraint that it starts with that double slash. And to make the test pass, we'll just return zero. There we go. So let's proceed with the next variation of the custom delimiter, which is the single number. Much like before, let's start with copying this for speed. Use the semicolon again. So now we've got this failing. We can go back to our string calculator and we can really look at this. We can further break this down and we can, we can take the expression and split it apart and do another match against that all in line in this case. Or we can take this a step further and say, what are we really doing? We are extracting a custom delimiter from the first line and then processing the rest of it with that delimiter just like we were before in this bottom case where we're using the the comma and the new line f sharp makes it really easy to do the latter where we we decompose this problem so let's go with that approach i'm going to create a new private function on this type so we'll just do let i'm going to call it add internal We'll give it some delimiters and we'll give it an expression. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We'll move in some of this code around a little bit, but for the most part, it's going to be basically the same. And we're going to take the expression and pipe it into add internal. And we're going to take this bit of these default delimiters, replace them with the parameter we gave it, and we're going to push that in there. Now for this block, we're going to keep the first bit of it the same because we need to know what to do. But we're going to take it a little bit further, and instead of anything else, we're going to first extract the delimiter. So. Let's say we want to just take, we're going to automatically make this an array. And we're just going to do expression dot, we want the third item. So in, uh, index two goes off our array. And we want to call into the same function. So we need to make it recursive. Do that in F sharp with the REC rec keyword. And I'm going to simplify this a little bit more. Let's get the substring that's everything after that new line. So let's do expression the substring. And I want to do the index of the new line. So expression dot index of New line and we'll do plus one because we want the character after it and we're going to pump that into via the pipe forward add internal with the delimiters that we just extracted and our tests are all satisfied if we give it another number we see that all of our tests still pass. And then finally on requirement four, we can do two numbers. And let's just start copying this down. 
and we'll go one semicolon two and we'll go two semicolon three so we'll have three and five and we need to rename it so we'll do two numbers with custom delimiter they work and for completeness let's do two three and six and two three four and nine rename it more than two and that's also passing we didn't even have to change our test because of the recursion and the piping to these different methods we got that all for free the final piece of the kata that I'm going to cover in this video is that calling add with a negative number will throw an exception. It says negatives not allowed, and then the negative was uh, and the negative that was passed. And we're also being told that if there are multiple negatives, to show all of them in the exception method message. Excuse me. So we'll do another test case just like we have before. And this is just going to go back to the default. I'm not going to throw in the custom delimiter, and I'm just going to do negative one. That'll be our very simple case. Add with negatives rows exception. Now, do this a little bit more, a little differently. In the past, we've just returned a result, but now let's go with result. And it's going to be negatives not allowed. And the message is going to include the list of negatives that it encountered. It has to have all of them in there. So let's just do negative one since that's the only one we're passing. And I'm going to put it in brackets. So it should look like that. And we'll create our calculator. And instead of what we've been doing so far, I'm going to kind of do the result, but a little differently. Let's do let result assert dot throws. And I like to use the third overload of this, which takes the ex exception type and the test delegate. So we're going to do type of our exception, I'm just going to call it negative encountered exception. And we'll take a delegate that has no arguments, and all it's going to do is calc.add with our expression. And we don't want it to return anything. If I was to do something here, the compiler is going to yell at me. Let me just complete this uh, because I want to return the result message. So it doesn't know what it's actually returning here yet. So we need to pipe this to ignore to get that void. And it should resolve in a little bit. We don't, it's not compiling yet because we don't have the negative encountered exception. So let's create that. negatives inherit exception and we'll just do copy that name so I don't have another typo since I seem to be doing that more as we get later into this video and we'll just do percent a with negatives And we'll build. Had to do it manually there, and and Crunch was picking it up, but the compiler inside of Visual Studio was not because and Crunch compiles outside, so everything compiles and our test fails because we're not actually detecting the negatives. 
here's another place that F sharp makes this type of thing trivial. So I'm going to let negatives positives. So I'm defining a tuple and we're just going to do this same piece of code and we're going to pipe it to a different function list partition which is going to take a function where we're going to give it a number and it's going to break this into two separate lists based on whether this returns true or false. I'm going to return less than do less than zero and I'm going to pass positives into the reduce that we were using before but I'm going to first say if negatives.length is greater than zero then raise negative encountered exception with negatives and magic happens and everything runs just fine the test has succeeded and we can do another test case where we have multiples and let's intersperse this a little bit let's do one negative one let's do two negative two and we can see negative one and negative two will both run and they both pass so we've written 18 tests and we've written two types with our main string calculator having an internal function that does all the work and it's all recursive and everything is tested for every scenario that we've been presented in our requirements. I hope this helped you look at the TDD experience. Uh, if you haven't already, I hope it, uh, if you haven't looked at F Sharp that it gives you something else to play with. Um, and if you have any comments, please let me know in the feedback. Thank you very much.